Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ted, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchist Dave. Nathan Nerdark. And today we're diving in, into another Unearthed Arcana, this time, Skill Feats. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. Get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Alright, so this time we get 18 new feats, all linked specifically to one of the skills that they've put out there. And there's a definite formula for how these things were created. You get a plus one to the appropriate stat modifier. You which is get, always good. Which is good. You either get proficiency if you don't have it, or if you've already got proficiency, you get expertise in said skill, and then you get a, a fluff or a, pl a power to kind of go along with said skill. A cool, unique ability. Yeah, I wouldn't that you don't get anywhere else yeah. for most of the stuff anyway. Well, for for some things it's it's incredibly useful. For others, I I think it's like all right, this is either a a twist or I'm not as you know not not feeling it as such. So there's some things I really enjoy about this on Earth Arcana, and there's some other things I'm very meh on. the The fact that if you look through them, like you said, there's a formula for all of them. Bonus to the, the appropriate stat absolutely makes sense. Of course, thing that um. That does that doesn't kind of sit with me is this when you get to that second tier ability. Okay, you get the proficiency in that thing. All right, perfect. That works. It's another way to add more skills to your character. Yeah. There isn't that many ways to do it in five E, but there aren't that many skills either. And that way, you don't have to take skilled, and you don't get a plus or anything. Right. Yeah. You you definitely you don't have to do that, but uh, you know. But if you already have the skill, you get expertise. Yeah, which is a super big deal. It is a big deal, and I and it's a big deal that I don't know how I feel about it, because it just seems like, you know, it just seems like they keep adding that same mechanic into the game over and over again. To, to you get to the certain point where freaking everything has expertise in everything. Well, I think they looked at it as if you actually take the skilled feat, you get three skills. So if proficiency is one third of a feat, they have to do three things here. Oh, I agree. No, I like the extra things. I like them doing stuff. I'm just not sure if though, like, if expertise is like the go-to thing for everything. Well, well, here, here's the thing. If I already have the skill, all right. Well, then I'm only getting the two of the three. So I thought, you know, my take on it is they wanted to make it useful regardless of whether you have the proficiency or not. You know, there's only so many so many times that you're going to get a feat. I think in, a, in some cases you're going to have the person who's going to take it because they really are focused on that particular skill. There's some people who are going to take it because they want that skill, and there's some people that are going to take it because they want that third ability. I totally get and understand why they do it. They just It just feels clunky and maybe a little bit lazy to me. Like, yo, know, you could, you, you could literally do pick another skill like is done for yes, a lot of other things. Already, yeah. It's, you know, that mechanics in the game. So, all right, well you took brawny, which normally would give you athletics. Well, instead of getting, you know, expertise in athletics, you're just going to, you know, pick something else. Right. But, and here's the problem too. Like there's certain feats now that like become like prerequisites for certain builds because of that expertise. It really is going to push people down that row. Mm -hmm. Like, and we, we've jokingly are talking about some combinations that are a little bit on the broken side. <laughs> and this is without getting into multi-classing. Right. Because, you know, uh, UAs never take multi-classing into account. Right. So let's, let's get into that said broken combination. The most broken one we found was brawny. Right. So, all right. Somehow. Bra somehow. Brawny plus one of strength makes sense. Proficiency or expertise in athletics, and then you count as one size larger for the purpose of determining your carrying capacity. All right, that's so far good, no problem. That, that's great. Now, let's take a Goliath. Now, a Goliath racially counts as one size larger when determining your carrying, pushing, pulling, lifting, all of that stuff. Well, all right, well, this says you count as large. Well, when you take that and add that to, I count as one size larger, well, now I can carry the same as a huge, but wait, <laughs> there's no, more. I'm a Goliath with a feet. That means I had to have a class. Yes. So therefore, let's go with Barbarian 
And, all right, well, we get that feat at fourth level. Let's push it to sixth. And now we take the bear totem. And now you double that carrying capacity. Holy crap. <laughs> so you're, you gain the might of a bear. Your carrying capacity, including maximum load and maximum lift, is doubled. And you have advantage on strength checks made to push, pull, lift, or break objects. So if I've already taken athletics, I now have advantage and expertise made to push, pull, lift, or break objects. And I count as huge for carrying. I mean, you would kind of get that. There's some overlap because you would get that while you're raging anyway. But this is, but this have, is all the time. This is all the <laughs> know, time. You don't have to be raging to have this strength. No, I'm just saying. I wonder what what the weight actually w ends up being. Like what how, what your carrying capacity ends up being. So, your carrying capacity is your strength score multiplied by fifteen. Larger creatures can bear more weight. For each size category above medium, double the creature's carrying capacity and the amount it can push, drag, or lift. So. So let's let's just take let's take it out to the max because you know it's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, all right, so it's 300, 360, and then we double that as 720. Yes, and then we double again, right? So that's 1440. That's just like your normal walking Go around down. weight, <laughs> you know, for a 20th level Goliath Barbarian. And that's not like how much he could actually pull, drag. Well, 20, 2440 is, I think we're missing this, missing one. Three three sixty yeah, three sixty is is your normal, so so for for anyone with a twenty four strength. But then we have to double it three times. So seven twenty, fourteen forty, twenty eight eighty. Yes. So as a twentieth level barbarian Goliath that you're walking with around the brawny with. can carry a ton <laughs> without <laughs> a problem. Oh yeah, I'm just I've got my my little. Sedan on my back, no problems. Yeah, yeah, we were joking. You basically just put a hoda on top of him, a hoda on top of him, and make him your war elephant. But you, like, it's not a joke. Like that's easily. <laughs> oh, it's just a couple of guys in plate mail, no problem. <laughs> With a <Yeah>. horse. <laughs> <laughs> With a horse. Uh, well, all right, deploy the knight in the horse. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a ramp, a sluice that the horse slides down with. Charge attacks. So. So there is some things that we found that get a little out of control. Now, we are talking about this heroic game where craziness can happen, but this isn't Saturday morning tabletop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is D&D. &D. And let's say he has, you know, for simplicity, if he has a 20 strength and he's like 10th level, you know, it's still ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. You're just taking away, you know, a couple points, you yeah. know, pretty much. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can get that 20th strength. You know, fair, fairly early on. Although, I mean, you're going to be a little bit slower because you took that, uh, you you took that that feat is going to yeah, slow you gonna, down a little bit. It's going to give you the strength bump. It's well, the give feet plus, plus one, one. Yeah. plus one. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, is there another strength skill that you could take? Well, if you put your 15 in and you're a Goliath, that's they get pluses to strength, right? Yeah, plus the strength and con. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so that's seven. Is a is, 17. So it's a 17. This will get you to 18. So eighth level, 20. Yeah. So, yeah, at 8th right. level is eighth when you level. can basically max that out. So, and, like, we're not even really looking hard. Like, there's probably other things in there to make it even more ridiculous. Like, what happens if you cast some large on him or something? <laughs> so, and that's one example. We spent way too much time on that right. one feat. So, <laughs> it, it, there's definitely some cool ones, like Arcanist, which gives you a little bit of spellcasting ability. Well, there's a number of them that, that give you a cantrip and a, and a first level spell. I'm in favor of all the all the knowledges that give you cantrips and first level spells. Yeah, I like the only really thing, great. the only my only objection is like the expertise for everything it feels a little lazy, and maybe they could have done something cooler. I don't know, maybe, but you guys might feel completely different about it. You guys might as well. But like the acrobat bonus action, make a DC 15 dexterity check and you succeed uh difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement like that's kind of a cool feature i, I like things like it, that it, it's things that like yes that's going to apply typically towards combat but there's times that that kind of thing can come up that it's not you know it's not not a combat thing like oh yeah this isn't, isn't going to affect me animal handle allows you to also use your bonus action to kind of give a command to an animal that's friendly towards you. All right, great. 
Yeah, that one kind of scream like screams ranger. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the investigator. You can take search as a bo- you can make a search check as a bonus action. Again, cool thematic. So I, I like the fact that it's giving things that use that bonus action mechanic because not everyone has a use for it. But it's still a limiting factor that if you're a character that has a bonus has things that you do something with your bonus action. All right, well now you don't do, get to do both. You got to pick. Yes, absolutely. Just you know, it's another option. Medic is another cool one where you actually you get to basically improve the healing during a short rest for up to six creatures, and it's not crazy. It's like oh, you get one of your dies as max. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like. I mean, it's actually not even really worth. It's in my opinion, it's not really worth it. But it's interesting if that's if that's the kind of character you want to well, play. I mean, if you're if you're playing a fighter, or you know, if someone's playing a fighter and someone uses this, it's a big difference to you know swing from one to one to ten to get hit points back. I, I'll take that. Ah, uh, you know, I would probably rather just have plus two to my con or something. <laughs> well, well, no. Yeah. What I'm saying is. If you're playing that healer type, yeah, what where you would normally be doing that kind of thing, like Rillian's not, you know, while he does heal the party, this isn't his thing. He's not going out trying to heal people. But if if you are taking medicine and every time you roll into town, you're trying to heal people, this fits that thematic character. Oh yeah, build. it is. And then it benefits six people during a short rest. I like it because pretty much party just doesn't have to roll. You can just multiply and be done. Instead well, for one die. Oh, for one? It's only one die. Oh, it's not all. It's it's, it's only the first one. Okay. So that, that's what I mean. It's like, eh. I mean, it's flavorful. It's kind of cool. Then you have something like menacing, which menacing. Uh, I, I want to say I have an issue with it, but I don't actually have an f- issue with that's it. That's good. I what I have an issue with is it's better than a class feature that the berserker barbarian gets. We all know that class feature is kind of lame. <laughs> you know, it's it's super lame because. You know, when you, instead of making, uh, when you take the attack action on your turn, you can replace one attack with an attempt to demoralize a human. It's the same thing as the Berserker Barbarian, except for what does he have to do? Oh, right, his full attack action he has to use for that. It's totally bullshit. And they should go back and fix that before they make stuff like this. He can just take it and it fixes his problem. And he gets no, it doesn't. He wasted a class feature. <laughs> He's got a dead class feature that is useless to him. He can still take the full attack action and do it if he wants. <laughs> well, that is true. But so, <laughs> so that that's like a, I got a bone in the pack with that one there. Well, with that it's the original ability rather than what this is. Yeah, like this is kind of cool. You know, train attack to, to terrorize someone. Like the, literally, this is the way this is written. Like the DMs out there you should be like oh you know what this is actually what i should do for that for that barbarian feature instead and just let them use that feature yes yeah and so th- that would be a kind of a fix so perceptive would you know for all those people who observant isn't enough you can you can go <laughs> go for this one eyes would totally have it oh uh, yeah it definitely definitely helps out i like the stealthy that you can move that you can move up to 10 feet in the open without revealing yourself as long as you're hidden in a sense at the end like so you're clearly not so you can go from not visible to a not visible space if, if it's with 10 feet away and even if they could possibly see you you're like through the shadows kind of thing i'm kind of i'm kind of digging on on the interaction ones that it's like all right i try and do a thing and it's opposed by the the wisdom insight oh, yeah they're yeah. using they're making more use of that mechanic yeah, yeah the opposition yeah yeah that's definitely cool Theolg- theologian the uh, the- theologian is another one. Yeah, come on, guys. You know I can't talk. Uh, is another one where it's like, hey, you know, you get some spells you can cast, which is kind of cool. Survivalist actually gives you a spell too. Um, yeah, only get one though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's alarm. And if you're already doing the ranger thing, those are spells known, so that becomes different, right? Yes. Yeah, there are spells you, known. So you know the spell, spell and it gives you it the doesn't free casting. Yeah, it gives you a free casting. It's not giving you the slot, which is the interesting thing. With these things, it's like you can cast this once a day without expending any slots. So it's it's interesting. Whereas like the, um... well, there's another area too that like this becomes interesting because it says you learn the alarm spell, right? Alarm spell is actually a ritual spell. So if you happen to be a ritual caster, you know that spell. So the question then becomes: Can you then ritually cast that spell whenever you want as a ritual? I would absolutely say if it, if it's a ritual spell and you know it. Hundred percent, right? And like for for the rest of the stuff you're getting, I don't think that's really a big deal. I would agree with you the same thing. 
Um, they brought up Stealthy, which is really cool about that. Performance is like this weird thing where you can use it to distract people. It's, it's basically what you said with the other stuff. So actually, I, for for an instance, there I thought it was like in combat, but it's not. So that then it would be kind of weird. One is can be in combat. I don't know. I like it. It's overall, it's really good. There's a lot of stuff that's added to it. Some of the things I just thought, I'm just not sure how I feel about them. This one I have to like grow on me, and I'm curious to see what they do with these in the future and where what direction they go. Mm. So, what do you guys think? Do you do you dig on these feats? Which one's your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? There's a great place to discuss that, and that's down in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can go check out nerdarchy.com. Go to Patreon. That's a good way over on Patreon. So, until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.